Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time and this week's topic guys is how to recognize a candlestick chart how to read a candlestick chart properly how to understand a candlestick chart properly and it's really important because in these markets when we're losing 10 20 30 percent overall in the s p 500 and the nasdaq 100 etc you want to know when are we going to bounce when are we going to pivot higher and not only will it help you um, with overall investing or trading on long-term charts it will help you on your intraday trading whether it's a one minute chart a five minute chart a 15 minute chart because you want to know when a stock is going to change directions when it's going to pivot and how um, it's going to do that right there are certain attributes that we're going to look for um, so you can see it break the trend line or break the moving average and one of the issues i see is a lot of folks are trying to catch a falling knife like well it can't go any lower than this so i need to get in here no it can absolutely go lower than that all right and we'll see a couple examples of stocks that looked really beaten up and continue to go lower so there are a lot of things you need to look for to make sure that that's the turn so that you're not falsely seeing the turn and bag holding while you're trying to catch a falling knife so it's a very important lecture because it can apply to not only your intraday trading on one minute two minute five minute charts but it can also apply to monthly charts or even longer term investing all right so if you like these videos please click that like button smash hammer that subscribe button i'm jared wesley of live traders let's get to it This week's lecture topic is understanding charts. And you're like, well, geez, Jared, we do a lot of that. Well, yes, we do. But this one's got a little bit of a different twist to it, so to speak. And I thought this would be an appropriate topic because, well, we're in an environment where I think this topic can help intraday traders as well as swing traders, core traders, and investors, right? So a couple few weeks back, we talked about the market cues in the spine, the levels, the areas in which you should consider buying. So today we're going to go another step further, uh, and we're not really going to focus on the cues in the spy, to be honest with you. Um, we're going to go another step further, and we're going to talk about where stocks might be turning, breaking trend lines, breaking moving averages, and we're also going to talk about discerning what a good buy setup versus a bad buy setup is. We're going to do almost all of this, almost all of this, with one chart. Okay, uh, there are multiple charts in here, but there's one specific chart that we're going to look at um, that's going to take up the majority of the lecture because I think it's a very appropriate chart uh, in terms of understanding what we're talking about here. And it has everything I'm talking about from double top, double bottom to trend line breaks to buy setups to good ones to bad ones, etc. and so forth. Uh, so I think it's a very uh, appropriate chart to do that. But before we get to that, we must first talk about when will the insanity stop um this is an email that i got here Ooh, there it is june 23rd not that long ago okay um and uh wow right wow 29 years old from singapore married with two kids holding a full-time job from eight to five and i trade regularly at night u.s markets i'm not going to read the rest of this um but let's just basically say this person gave me some compliments which was nice to say the least your lectures are free of charge i can't believe it wow thank you um however Let's get to the goods, the good stuff. This person started with an $80,000 trading account. And then eventually, um, after, let's be honest, risking way too much money too soon, um, decided that, uh, well, they needed more money to trade. So they enlisted family and friends um, for more money, right? Because, you know, things were going so well for this person. And over the next few months, I increased my liquid... My net liquid to 300000 with all the hype and growth stocks and SPACs. I was on the verge of thinking of retirement at the age of 28, thinking that trading could be my full-time career. So this person basically, guys, uh, went from zero to one year, 18 months, I think it was, um, one and a half years ago. There it is, one and a half years ago. So basically in his first year, because that's what we're talking about. So basically from September 2020, I, I, I'm trying not to laugh in a mean way, but from September 2020, this person went from zero experience, okay, to May 21st <clears throat> of 21, sorry, May of, of 2021. So nine months, let's just call it nine months. It might be a little more than that, okay? And went 
basically from 80,000 to 300,000 in that nine months. And then from May to November, gave every single penny of it back, including their risk capital they began with. Friends and family's money, their own money. So in nine months, quadrupled their account or more, probably more, okay? And then managed to lose all my profits plus my capital inclusive of the money from family and friends. Wow. I was stunned beyond words. And then you have to ask the question, why? What in the world made you think with zero experience that you were just going to walk in and take the market's money. You guys know that phrase? I use it frequently. When you do something wrong, I say, don't spend that money. The market wants it back. Well, there you go. The market took it back, right? I say that frequently. If you break your plan and you make money doing so, and I say, don't spend that money. The market wants it back. Okay, that's a tough one. Now, the positive is we emptied our personal savings to return the money to family and friends, and now we're back to square one. Now, obviously, this person must be somewhat intelligent because they had eighty thousand dollars at uh, twenty-seven years old, twenty-six or twenty-seven years old. So clearly, they must have done something right, saving money, decent job. I don't know, but why am I telling you that part of the story? Because even people that are smart or hardworking or do well in life still do stupid things sometimes. Like you're not immune to it just because you're a CEO or just because you went to Harvard. You're not immune to being stupid. We're humans. We, we do these things sometimes. Um, so I show you guys these when will the insanity stop so you can learn from other people's mistakes. And like I said, not all of these people that make these mistakes are, are, are dumb people. Some of them are very bright people and they just do foolish things. It happens, like right? But this is pretty egregious. You know, from zero to a year and a half, went from zero to 300,000 and 300,000 back to zero. So please, please use proper money management. $5 risk per trade, $10 risk per trade until you know what you're doing, until you have proper stop losses and you can actually trust yourself. Um, so anyway, I'll move along from this, but wow, just sad to see these stories. Um, but uh, anyway, it does happen, all right? I don't know if you guys saw this, this was yesterday, okay? This is why we use stop losses. And I thought this was happening as I was putting the lecture together yesterday. I was literally putting this lecture together and I was like, wow, LYT is getting crushed, right? Crushed, crushed, crushed. And this is why we use stop losses, okay? Because I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that's impossible. That could never happen, right? That's the, that's the mantra that most people think. Now, if we were talking about Apple, you're probably right. It's probably not going to lose 88% in one day, but this is not Apple. Okay. And you look here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, almost eight green bars in a row on an IPO and then slop bap. And here's the crazy part. Now, maybe it has come out later. Perhaps it's come out later, but at the time that I took the screenshot, there was no news on LYT. There was literally no news on this stock. It just dropped out of nowhere. The company didn't make any statements or announcements. And at the time, I took a screenshot of that too. There was no news. So what's the point here? It just fell out of nowhere for no reason. We don't know. We don't know. Sure, there's probably a reason. We just don't know what it is. And someone's saying there's still no news on it. Are you kidding? An 88% decline? Now, granted, it popped back up to 7 or $8, but if you bought this thing anywhere in the first eight days of trading, you were a loser yesterday. If you happen to bought it anywhere in the previous two or three days, you are getting wham-boozled. So when I give lectures and tell people, never put all your money in one basket, never put all your eggs in one basket, never put more than 10% um, in any one individual stock, and that's a lot 10%, well, this is a great example. Why? Could you imagine if you had a million bucks and you put it all in this stock because you thought this is the next great thing and now you're down to 120 grand? Ouch. You know, it's crazy. So have a stop loss in place. And if you don't have a stop loss and you're, you know, you might want to risk two, three, four percent of your whole, you know, capital of investment capital, at least you won't get killed. So maybe it goes to zero and you lose 5% of all of your, your net worth capital, not the end of the world. You're still going to make it through that. 
But if you go all in, you YOLO it, you diamond hands it, <clears throat> Bitcoin people. I'll be doing a video on that here soon. Wink, wink, wink. Who's the idiot now? Not me. Anyway, um, I'm only commenting because I got some nasty emails and nasty comments uh, on YouTube and Twitter over my uh, Bitcoin video I did a year ago. How do you like me now? Anywho, learn, 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 learn. This stuff actually happens. It actually happens. Okay. So now on to this. You guys saw this a couple weeks ago. All right. You guys saw this a couple weeks ago. Oh, some of them were funny, Randy. Oh, Jared, that's not going to age well. This video is not going to age well. <laughs> okay. Anyway, um, average investors underperform. We saw this. You guys just saw this. I I'm rehashing this slide. Okay. They do. Because they're always doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. They sell when they should buy and they buy when they should sell and Americans are terrible investors. Well, this can extend to traders, right? People generally are not good traders because they're doing the wrong thing at the wrong time. They don't understand the chart in front of them. They're undisciplined. They don't have stop. There's a myriad of reasons for it, okay? So today we're gonna to talk a little bit about how you can stop being so terrible, not just at investing, but at trading. Um, and there's a method to that madness. It's not just luck. You're not just throwing darts at the wall. Okay. So again, this is just to reconfirm, reaffirm, whatever you want to call it, that people just aren't very good at investing. Okay. Yeah. You're going, oh, that was five years ago. No, they're just as bad now. The stats haven't changed. I have a new one of these too. Okay. So now let's dig into the good stuff. All right. Transitions and trend line breaks. Why is this important? because you need to understand how stocks change direction, okay? We talked about buy setups about a month ago or so in terms of levels of retracement. Remember we talked about 100%, 50%, 25%. Well, this is a little bit different. Attributes of a transitionary retest and failure, okay? So breaks the trend line, warning sign. So right here, right there, okay? Breaks the trend line, there's your warning sign. But note, not, action event all right i guess i could put not an action event kind of a little bit better english there right not an action event so we break the trend line and this is not an action event it's simply a warning sign it's saying hey look something's changing something's different but i'm not going to put my hard-earned money on the line and i want you guys to really think about that i made that statement as well last week this is your hard-earned money respect it Seriously, because I think it's true in, in most cases in life. It takes longer to earn it than it does to spend it, right? Your house burns down faster than you can build it back up. Well, this is true for money. Your money is precious, right? It's precious. If you woke up tomorrow and somebody deleted your bank account, you wouldn't be a very happy person. None of us would. So why are we so cavalier and so nonchalant? about how we make trading as well as investment decisions. Why, why are we this way? I think because people lack confidence, right? They wanna believe and also misery loves company or this group mentality. It's like, well, if they're doing it and they lose, at least we lose together. Well, that's the thought process of an average person, right? We don't wanna be average because well, average people, most of them are broke. So we don't want to be average. So stop thinking like an average person, right? There's a reason that saying is about misery loves company, okay? Be different. Think differently. And this is what you have to do. So warning sign, okay? No action. Just be mindful. Keep an eye on it. Breaks the moving average. Well, at, in this particular example, it breaks the moving average and the trend line at the same time. Warning sign, not an action event. Then retest and fails to put in a new low. So it bounces back up, retest, and does not put in a new low here, okay? So that's a warning sign, possible action event. And you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, possible means what else is going on? If that's all that's happening, then it's not an action event. But if you get some form of a volume spike, if the prior pivot puts in a higher high. If this pivot right here puts in a higher high, that gives you more confirmation. If you put in a higher low, more confirmation. If you have a volume spike, more confirmation. If you have a wide range ending bar, more confirmation. 
multiple bars down with a wide range ending bar, more confirmation. Get what we're doing here? We're taking something that was initially relatively aggressive and we're continuing to take the aggressiveness away by adding confirmation, right? With bottoming tails and volume and higher pivot highs and, and multiple bars down and ending bars. So we're taking the aggressiveness and now we're kind of flipping it to being far less aggressive. And now we're getting to a point where it might be worth putting our hard earned money into this. And the reason this is important is this goes for everything we do in trading. This could be a one minute chart. This could be a monthly chart. This could be a long term investment chart. This could be the, the NASDAQ 100. It could be the S&P 500. It could be the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Doesn't matter. But it's going to give us an understanding, a better understanding of when markets are likely to pivot. Will this hold true every time? No. Will it be a perfect indicator? No. Okay. So the point I'm getting at here is this. This is an area of potential entry, potential entry. But no matter what we have, bottoming tails, volume, all those things, wide range ending bars, it's still going to be a slightly aggressive place on the chart because this is the first time the stock has done this. And we don't know if it's a fake out. So the point I'm making is where is the safest entry? The safest entry is to wait for the stock to confirm its strength then pull back to that safer area, which is over here, right? In this case, it didn't do a full retracement, right? If I was to make this over here, right? It didn't do a full retracement, but it did a retracement above this area. And this area, remember guys, you're gonna see it here shortly. The ceiling becomes the floor. Over here, this is our ceiling. This is an area of sellers, an area of resistance. So when we're moving up right here, we're expecting some form of reaction. In this particular simple case, there is no reaction. We slice right through it. But when we pull back, those sellers now represent buyers because buyers are what it took to take out the sellers. So now this area is remembered as an area where buyers took over, took out the sellers. So now when we pull back to it, it's a positive experience, not a negative experience. Over here, this is a negative experience because this is where sellers overpowered and overwhelmed the buyers. So the next time we retest it, you're expecting sellers once again to overpower the buyers. They didn't. The buyers overpowered the sellers. And now the next time we pull back, it's the opposite thought process, the opposite emotion. It's a bullish positive emotion. Safest point on the chart is right here. This doesn't mean you can't take it down here, but if you do, maybe don't go full boat. And if you do, put your stop loss under the green line. Yes, you could make an argument to put it under this little pivot, but under the green line is a little safer. This is a very important chart. It's a super important chart because it's how every stock transitions. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes you just have one V bottom and the stock rips after a climactic move, but this is generally how stocks transition and move. So the only question you need to ask yourself is, how aggressive do I want to be? And that's true. Aaron says, hey, the idea of looking for reasons to not take the trade has really helped me in my learning. And I, I would agree with that. So I try not to pick the double bottom. I try to pick the first pullback after a new high. But if you want to nibble some, nothing wrong with this. Okay, so let's take a look. This is kind of what it looks like, right? Chops up, pulls back, goes lower, 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 lower. And then it puts in this big bottoming tail right with huge volume bounces back up but it does fail to put in a new high it is a pretty strong retracement right i think we would all agree it didn't break into the 18 17 18 dollar area which is where you would have expected it to fail see that minor price resistance above you right there this is where we'd expect it went a little higher than that and then it failed and after it failed it put in a higher low but before all of this happened the first thing we note is it broke the trend line. That's our first warning sign. If you were to draw a trend line here, it breaks above it. But again, there's not a lot to that. Yes, it broke the trend line. Good, great, whatever. But there's a lot more work to be done here, okay? Then it puts in a lower, slightly lower high. That's good. If we had a moving average, it probably in here would have taken out the moving average. So we're getting check one, breaks the trend line. Check two, breaks the moving average. Check three, higher, or sorry, check three, lower high, my bad. Check three, 
lower high, check for higher low. But, but, I want you guys to take note of something. It's very important to take note of this. What happened right here? What happened right there? All the same previous prior attributes happened. We broke the trend line. We broke the non-existent moving average, and we put in a lower high. And now you're thinking, ooh, doji bar, bottoming tail, high or low. I'm going to buy it. Right? Right there, you're thinking, I'm going to buy it. And it stops you out. Like real soon, real shortly after you get in, it stops you out. And remember on the last slide, I said this is why we should give it the prior low as our stop loss. Put your stop under here. Give it room. Remember, this is the first retest of the prior low. We don't know yet just how strong this stock may or may not be. So if you're going to take this on that buy setup right there, right there, you better give it some room. Now, the challenge for this is if you get in at $14, your stop loss is at 10. That's a $4 stop loss on a $10 stock. It's 40%. Now, in this case, it ended up cranking up and moving $12, but you would have been stopped right there. So then we beg the question, what do you guys think? Good or bad three bar play? What do you guys think right here? Yes, no, what do you think? Talk to me, Goose. Or is it Rooster now? Either way. Johnny says bad. Felix says okay. Anyone wanna take the other side of that? Say yes, it's good. What do you guys think? Good, I wouldn't take it. Okay, I'd pass. Less than okay. I hate it, wow, fantastic. The tails would make me pass. All right, what do you think I'm gonna say? That's your next question. What do you think I'm gonna say? You said what you said, now I haven't asked that question before. What do you think I'm gonna say? You're less confident about that? <laughs> All right. I'm going to say in this particular case, in this particular case, I like it. And I'll tell you why. You see, the entire reason I like it is because it failed this buy setup and came right back up on massive volume with a wide range bar that took out all of this. Does that make sense? So we have a failed buy set up here, right? Re very aggressive, by the way. Very, this buy set, there's no way I would take the first one, okay? And then it takes out all of this because it shook out the tree. It got what it came for, right? Whoever did this got what they came for. They took out the people who bought it right here and right here and right here. And then look at this bar. I mean, if you need a confirmation of strength, you just got it. It not only took out those three or four bars, but it did so in insane volume where, yes, it was a little bit red when it started and just took out everything. Then I got my resting bar and then another resting bar and then it ends up going higher. Now, does this mean it wasn't slightly aggressive? Yeah, it was probably a little bit aggressive because of where it's at on the chart. But this volume on that bar means a lot, right? This volume on that bar is very, 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 very powerful. It's hard to ignore it. It's basically a shakeout bar, right? Yes, the top, the bottoming tail isn't as big as perhaps we would want to see, but it's basically a shakeout bar, okay? So when you look at that, I like it. And then on top of it, you get two resting bars. Peekaboos kind of hangs out and then moves. Fair enough, this has been a sloppy trading stock the whole way. No matter what you took on this, it was a little bit sloppy. Over here on the left, over here on the right, in the middle, every everything's sloppy. So if you choose not to take it, that's okay. Maybe wait till it breaks this prior point at $20, that's fine. And then look for an alternate entry. And we don't know what the future brings, so we don't know if we'll get an entry or not. But I like that shake with volume. So I probably would have considered taking it. Now, let's move on. Some of you may have seen this before. It's been a while. It's been a long while since I've brought this chart back up, okay? So we're gonna take a look uh, at this chart, okay? Um, but a little bit differently, okay? I understand there's a lot of lines 
on this chart, right? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines. And I know it kind of mucks up the chart a little bit and it's hard to see certain things. But what I want you guys to note is the trend line here, okay, right there in orange, the trend line right there. I want you to also note this little retest right here, even though put in a lower low. And what we're gonna do over the next three, four slides is we're gonna talk about these pink lines. Right here, right here, right here, right here, and right here. Okay, now one of the things I frequently tell you guys, but it's been a while since I've told you guys is try to put a piece of paper over the future of the chart. So when you're doing something, right? So if I took, um, let's see, let's do this, right? Let's, this is something you might want to consider doing. Every time you go to, to, to judge a trade, do that. Okay, you'll see it in a second, all right? Why? Because we don't know what the future holds, right? I apologize. There's a pretty good amount of delay there, guys. Wow, there's like 10 second delay. Um, we have no idea what the future holds, okay? And if you, if you see the future, you're more apt to say something different about that trade in hindsight when you're reviewing your charts at the end of the day. Does that make sense? Um, so I think you guys should do this for every trade you take. All right. So we're done with that. Um, all right, man, guys, there's like a 20 second delay on that. I apologize. I don't know why that delay is so bad, but it is, but you get the general gist, put a piece of paper over the future so that you can't make a biased decision, right? Because now you know the result and I'm telling you, you think you're objective, but when you know the result of a trade, you're more apt to write, not a bad idea. Remember we talked about Apple today in that same ilk, right? We talked about Apple saying everyone that took it made money or most people made money, but was it a good trade? The markets were going lower, breaking a new low and Apple was, was triggering the entry higher. Now the relative strength was amazing, but the market looked lower. Like it actually looked like we were gonna continue lower. So it made Apple uh, to be a, a tough trade. All right, so now let's divide these down individually, right? So this is trade one. There's the entry hour arrow right there. There's the stop right there. Target one, Y, prior pivot high. Target two, Y, prior pivot high, okay? So entry here, stop here, target one, target two. So now the question now becomes, Is this a good trade, right? Is this something that we would consider taking, okay? And then you gotta ask, well, if you consider this to be a good trade, then you wanna ask yourself, well, why? Why is this a good trade, okay? So I look at this and I see a lower high right here and I see a lower low down at the bottom, right? down at the stop loss area, okay? And I look at that and I think, that's a buy setup in a downtrend. I mean, realistically speaking, right? I mean, you can see the moving average is trending lower here, right? I can see that. I can see the lower high, which is where that target one area is. And even though it's not much, I can see a lower low. I mean, when you look at that, you, there better be something on a higher time frame, a 15 minute or a daily or a 60 or something. There better be something there for you to justify this trade because with the information that we have in front of us, there is no justification for this trade. None. None. Like to me, there's a 0% chance that I would take this. You're still below the trend line. If we drew a trend line, you're still below the moving average. You put in a lower high. Oh, goodness. It's hard to find anything really positive other than perhaps the bottoming tail at the bottom. But there's really hard to find anything positive about this. So for me, this is an easy no. Right? That's a check gone done. I mean, if you have a pre-trade checklist, you're not going to get very far on this. Okay, so let's move past that one. Now, the next one, okay, maybe we have a slightly different opinion, okay, and you take a look at this, and you're like, okay, what is different, all right, what is different 
Well, now we have a slightly, and I do mean slightly, higher high, right? You see this kind of first target area, slightly higher high. We, you could argue, right, that we have a pivot low that was broken, right? Take a look at this, this lower high right there, okay, where my cursor is, you'll see this kind of, um, this topping tail area. Um, we have a lower high that was broken, right? So it failed to put in a, a new lower low and it broke this prior pivot high, ultimately putting in a higher high. So again, the argument simply is we have one higher high, we also have one higher low and soon to be two higher lows, lower high here, lower high here on the, on the individual bars of the pullback. But before we get to the individual bars, just take a look at the broader picture. This topping tail certainly looked like a sell setup. Like it really did. You put in a lower low here. Now you have a topping tail right there. And you say to yourself, well, this is a lower high and this stock has now put in two lower highs and two lower lows. There's a lower low here and a lower low here. This right here, guys, right at the, where this green line is, right? Okay. You could make a strong argument to short that, couldn't you? Right? I mean, seriously, you could make a strong argument there. You have two lower lows and two lower highs. It's the definition of a downtrend. Okay. But if we go deeper on this, we broke above the trend line, right? If we drew a trend line there, I'll move this over just so you can see it briefly. That would be your trend line. Okay. This red, okay. Roughly, roughly this red line would be your trend line. Okay. Broke above that also broke above this pivot right here, put in a higher low. Now you pull back and you're above the trend line. You're above the newly, newly rising moving average. So this one, albeit aggressive, is actually not that bad, right? Albeit a little bit aggressive, it's not that bad. Um, so this is one I would definitely consider taking. Um, would I jump up and down and go crazy over it? Probably not. But I think the general sentiment here is this stock is going higher. So the only question you need to ask yourself is, is there enough confirmation for me to want to trade it right here? Remember that hard earned money comment. Do I want to put my hard earned money into this thing? That's debatable. But you do are you're definitely getting through more of your checklist, right? We've broke the trend line. Check. We broke above the moving average, check. We put in a higher high, check. We put in two higher lows, check. We have two lower highs on the individual bars and two lower lows on the individual, check. We have a green bar change of color bar, check. Is the risk to reward there? Seven cents all the way up to the first target area, which is 10 cents, yes. One and a half to one is probably acceptable enough, check. So there's some check marks here. You'd get through a good portion of your list. Okay, you could even argue you might be at minor price support right there. You could even make that argument. All right, so it's just one of those things. It depends on how aggressive you want to be, but I think it's an acceptable buy setup, right? I think it's an acceptable buy setup. Um, so it's something that I would probably consider taking uh, and borderline actually take. Uh, perhaps you might want to go into that last one with a half lot and then maybe maybe add back to it. Okay, something like that. All right, now we are on to trade number three. All right, guys, give me one quick sec. Okay, sorry about that. All right, so now trade number three. Now we have a completely different picture in my opinion. All right, we have a completely different picture in my opinion. We have a stock that that previous buy setup ripped, and I mean ripped, right? I mean, this the one we were talking about at 27.58 um, goes up one, two, three, four, four bars in a row, retest the, the high of the day. So now we know, without a shadow of a doubt, buyers are in control. That last buy setup at 27.58 was a powerful, powerful sign, okay? We didn't know it at the time, but it turned out uh, excuse me, turned out to be a powerful sign. Now, now we pull back. Well, now we definitely have a higher high, higher low, higher low, higher low. We have three higher lows and two higher highs. So we are firmly in an uptrend. Now, the only real negative here is the pullback is a little bit 
sloppy, right? I mean, you kind of have this doji bar in the middle that messes us up, right? It went lower, then it went higher, maybe it went higher, then it went lower, et cetera. But all things considered, you have an 11 cent target with a nine cent stop loss. So that's not great, right? It's over 1R, 1.2, 1.3R, but it's not great. And then you have to ask yourself, well, what are the odds we're going to break above this double top? Well, the reason I think those odds are higher is because of where we're coming from, right? So this stock went one, two, three, four, five bars back up into the red line, right? Five bars into the red line. So it was tired. It was extended into resistance. So you expect the pullback. Well, we got the pullback. And guess what we got? We got a proper pullback, an appropriate pullback, a pullback to an area that we would hope and expect the stock would bounce. And that pullback is the prior pivot high, right? That prior pivot high. Remember, the ceiling becomes the floor. The ceiling becomes the floor. So we pull back right into that area, which is also right at or near a rising moving average. It's roughly a 50% retracement. So you have all three location items, prior pivot high, minor price support, rising moving average, and 50% retracement, okay? Bottoming tail triggers right here and it rips, right? It rips higher, okay? So for me, I think this is perhaps the best buy setup on the chart. Now, in hindsight, the one before it looks a little better in hindsight, but in real time, that wasn't the case. In real time, this one looks the best, okay? Yeah, but Joseph, we just talked about this. We just talked about this. You have a stock that has transitioned, has put in multiple higher highs, and it pulled back exactly where I would want or expect it to pull back because it was five bars up into the high of the day. Well, guess what? High of the days are going to be broken depending on how they are reached, right? That's one of the big deals about trading. Remember, it's not just where you are, it's how you got there. Right? It's a huge topic in trading. Level and depth of retracement, angle of retracement, where we are on the chart and how we got there on the chart. Well, we're getting here after a nice 50% move, which is the ideal retracement. Maybe it's 40%. It's the ideal pullback, the ideal level of retracement. Okay, It's rested just enough. Rocket fuel. Okay, Now, we move on to trade four. Now, remember... Hypothetically, we don't know the future. This is why you need to cover up the future. We don't know the future. So this stock goes one, two, three, four, five, six bars straight up on that last buy setup, okay? Then it pulls back and again, it's got some overlap, lower high, lower high, lower high, but again, not a great sequential pullback right there, okay? Not a great sequential pullback right there. So when you take a look at this, the entry is 2805, the stop loss is 27.98, seven cents. But again, 28.16 is 11 cents. So you know you're looking at an R and a half, 1.6 R, whatever to the prior high. But there are a lot of tails here. So there are some positives. There are some negatives. Okay, and the positives are rising moving average. Okay, multiple higher highs and higher lows. Good negatives this retracement is not even close to 50 percent right this green line kind of represents the 50 percent retracement area right the green line represents that 50 percent retracement okay so eh, it's at a moving average it's not a 50 percent retracement it's not at minor price support that's a problem you're missing two of the three location items the risk to reward is actually okay but again the pullback is a little choppy so now to me we're back down to kind of that Second trade, right? That one at 27.58, I think it was. Okay. So now we're kind of in that in between land. And we're going, hmm. And the reason it's important, guys, for us to break this chart down is not just to see if this is a good buy setup, is what about adding to your trades, adding and reducing? If you want to really fully take advantage of some of these moves, you want to add to some of these trades, would this be a good ad area? Maybe, right? Maybe. Could you add it 27.90 after it breaks the previous pivot two highs? Um, that's a tough ad because you can't raise your stop, Aaron, right? So where are you going to raise your stop to make that ad happen? Ty says, would the bottoming tail rule be an issue in this case? Uh, not for me, it wouldn't be, Ty. I mean, Unwall might have a different opinion on that, but not for me. Um, and to your question, 
Uh, I don't think I would add there, Aaron, again, because there's nowhere I can reasonably raise my stop loss. You know what I mean? At that moment in time, at that point in time. Uh, so I don't think I would. Now, up here, eh, debatable. You know, um, I don't think I would take this. In fact, I might be more excited and more inclined to take the one at 27.58, you know, trade number two, uh, because it is cleaner on the pullback. Um, it is a transitionary type buy setup. Uh, you know, a perfect world, this trade number two would move up and pull back to 2760, right? The high of there, but that didn't happen. So when I look at the first four trades, for me, trade three is the best so far. Trade four, that's tough. Okay. And then one last one. What about trade five? What about that? What about trade five? Well, I think most of us are going to be on the same page here. When you look at trade five, there's just, it's really, really hard to find an acceptable reason to take this. I mean, even one reason, it's hard. When you look at it, okay, sure. Lower high, lower high, lower high, right? Three or four of them. Lower, low, lower, low. Now, why, why, is, why do I do this, guys? Some of you are like, Jared, why are we even talking about this? Not this chart, this trade, trade five. Why are we even talking about trade five? Does anybody know? Anyone want to venture a guess why I'm even bringing it up? Like, what's the purpose of even talking about such a crappy trade? Anyone? I'll give you a second to think about it. Why would I even want to bring up such a crappy trade? Well, sure, some people definitely take it, okay? But the main reason I'm bringing it up is to show you guys that the basic buy setup, as it's taught in professional trading strategies, isn't all that great. If you actually look at a basic, basic buy setup, this covers all the bases of a basic buy setup. It does. I mean, when you look at professional trading, you're saying, okay, I need two or more lower highs, two or more lower lows, and it must be in a stage two uptrend on the time frame in which I'm taking the trade. That's it. That's it. That's how simple the basic buy setup is. Well, this meets those criteria. It's got one, two, three, four lower highs, one, two, three lower lows, and it's clearly in an uptrend on the time frame in which we're taking it. So somebody could email me this and go, Jared, I followed the rules in PTS and, and, and now you're telling me this is a crappy buy setup. Yes, I am. Because there's more to it than that. So to a newer trader, novice trader, basic trader, they're going to go, I followed the rules and it didn't work. See that technical analysis doesn't work. It's a fraud. It's just not how it is, right? You, there's more to it than that. So let's take a look. One, it's below the moving average. Two, the retracement level is more than 50%. Three, okay, it's not sitting at minor price support. It's well below minor price support. The pullback is sloppy and overlappy, but the one main kicker for me that says everything, this is a weak new high. You don't hear me say that word that often, but this is a weak new high. Okay, note, this high down here on trade two, that's a significant higher high. Trade three, significant higher high. Trade four, significant higher high. Look at the previous pivot high compared to the current pivot high. Every one of them was significantly higher except for this one. What does this tell you? Buyers are running out of steam. They're running out of gas, okay? They're running out of commitment. Every one of these highs was, was pronounced significant, easily noticeable. Wow, what a new high. What a new high. What a, not this one. It barely peekabooed and put in a new high. And the retracement was deeper. So think about both sides of that coin. The new high was weak. Buyers are less committed. And the pullback was deeper. Sellers are more committed. Now you have a double whammy, right? If the weak new high wasn't enough, the deeper pullback should have been enough to tell you, stay away. I am not what you want to trade today. Okay? So this is a, I would call it very bad buy setup. That There's no way I would take on trade five. Okay? And range is a problem. Everything about it's a problem, Fernando. There's really, 
it'd be really hard to to find a good enough reason to take this okay so when we look at all five of these realistically number three is the best and probably number two is the second best followed by number four and then the last two are just equally bad right so i'll do that one more time trade number three was the best followed by trade number two followed by trade number four and one and five are just just not good all right so in a perfect world this is what a transition looks like in a perfect world okay we don't live in one we don't trade in one okay um so this trend line can be moved twice guys because remember you have to move it so the trend line initially started out here right and went to kind of about there right that's kind of where it started out but once you broke it and put in a new pivot right once this trend line was broken and a new pivot was formed then you need to move that trend line to here and then it puts it back to there okay so point simply is whoops messed that up there we go okay the point simply is this wide range bar with this pullback oh my goodness oh my goodness you should be excited about this because now we have a higher high and a higher low and another higher high and a higher low pulling back to some support now would it have been better if this moved up to 25 and pulled back to 22 yes it would have been better like we, it would have been better if this pullback was to the red line right but this is still a very good bicep this second one oh my gosh i mean it's hard not to get massively excited about that right it puts in a higher high and a higher low pulls back to minor price support is eh, maybe a 40 percent retracement um it's going to be above the moving average at this point on the 50 period this is a 200 okay um this second one is just it's, it's good I, I can't think of it. it's just really 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 good the first one is pretty good the second one is really good you don't find them this clean this nice in this early in a transition very often but this thing is pretty damn good and then look at the move it made it went from i don't know 24 25 all the way up to like 37 okay pulls back moves up pulls back and then it gets a little tired right you might have some issues at 30 perhaps with some of this junk over here to the left but the first these first two buy setups especially the second one were were very 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 good now i'm telling you guys this because it goes back to this right this is what people are you know investing in 2021 investing in 2022 right whether it's trading or investing or whatever this is kind of the way the world works and people, instead of looking at 2022 as opportunity, they're looking at it as a slap in the face. And you know, I'm sitting here going, please drop more, right? Because I want to buy up the market as it pulls back. So don't just look at this for the markets. And we're going to look at that here in just a second. Look at it for your own trading. When you see a stock do what the market is doing now, and it gives you a reason to get in, right there's a level of retracement that gives you that retest or some other reason then get in for that reason don't be scared and i, I mean again i hate using because warren buffett's beating it to a dead horse but right be greedy when others are fearful and be fearful when others are greedy that's what you guys need to be doing okay that's what you need to be doing okay so we take a look at this now granted this is a month old but we're not too far from this right we're at 283 on the queues and this is 275 but we're you know similar areas what is everyone else doing right now they're being immensely fearful right immensely fearful right now yeah they're selling they're getting out now guys be to be fair i understand there are some people that don't have a choice i get this i'm not dumb but if you are in that bracket of people that's that's tight that you have to sell some investments to, to make ends meet, sell as little as possible. Try to get a side job if you're capable because you don't want to be selling your investments down 32.6%. I promise you, you don't. So do whatever you can to not pull money out of a 20, 30% down market. Get a side hustle, sell something if you're capable or able. Do your very best to limit how much you sell, and if you're in the position, buy up as much as you can, if you're in the position. 
Now, I get it. Some people are in their 60s and 70s and maybe don't have a financial education, didn't see this coming, I understand, and you're in a tough spot. But if you're younger than that, and you're smarter with your money, understand that this will happen again. We're not done here. Like this market's probably going to go lower, but give it five or 10 or 20 years and, and another one of these will happen. It always does. So it's going to happen again. So right now is a buying opportunity, not a selling time. Again, be greedy when others are fearful. Be fearful when others are greedy. Well, the fear has crept into the market and it's coming down. Look to be buying. We already talked about the levels. I'll show them to you again. This was from a while ago. All right. Now I'll show. There's a there's a method to my meds. You guys already saw this chart a week or two ago. Whenever it was, okay, two weeks ago. This was back. You can see it. 08, 07, 06. Guys, the economy was really good before the 08 crash. Well, the economy the past 10 years has been relatively good, right? It's been generally good since 2012 to today. Sometimes better than others, but generally strong. People are in a better position today or 2021 than they were in 2008. So hopefully you take some of that money and put it into these pulling these markets that are pulling back. But wait for it. There's a method to this. Okay? You're like, why are you showing me something that already happened, Jared? You'll see why in a second. Oh my gosh. This is just what we learned. This is just what we talked about. Right? You have your trend line. You have to redraw it when there's another pivot. Now there's your double bottom retest. Now I am not suggesting that you're always going to pick the bottom. But you're damn well not going to pick the top either. So when you finally start breaking above this area and putting in higher lows and higher highs, okay, then you can start buying. So I want to be clear. I'm not suggesting you're going to buy at 25. I mean, unless you're Nostradamus, that's pretty hard to do. But even during this pullback, the SPY today currently is at $283. So even if you bought it at 40 or 50, you're up 400%, 500%, even if you bought it here. But most people during this period, I remember it very clearly, said, F the market, screw the market, F Wall Street, occupy Wall Street. I am never, ever, ever putting money in the stock market. Again, it's going under my mattress. Well, that's not very smart. Real estate, similar sentiment at the time right? All those no doc loans and stated income loans and all this other stuff. Now, guys, I say this frequently, so please don't be mad at me. We can all blame the bank for giving you a no doc stated income loan. But who filled out the loan application? Did the bank fill it out for you or did you fill it out? I'm guessing you did. So if you told the bank you were making $200,000 a year and you knew you were making seventy five, dollars is that the bank's fault you lied? Do you get where I'm going with this? I'm not saying that they should have done what they did, but you also need to take some responsibility for your actions. Don't just put it on everybody else, right? Because the victim mentality, one, it never wins. And two, if you put all the blame on other people, it also means you're powerless to change it, right? If, if, if there's always somebody else's fault, then that means you genuinely have no control and that means you can't change it. And well, might as well just stop living. So that mindset is a dangerous place to play. I would just assume to say it's 100% my fault because now I'm in control to fix it. All right, so my point simply is you may not get the bottom and I don't expect you to. Heck, you may have waited till 50 to get back into the markets. But it's better than getting back in when the markets peaked at 300 or wherever they peaked at, right? It's better than cursing Wall Street. It's saying, hey, this is a time of opportunity. Let me take advantage of it. And I and to be fair, to be fair, I get it. People struggled, financially struggled, maybe didn't have a lot of excess cash. This is why the rich get richer. They have money when no one else does. Why do they have that money? Because they're probably good with money, right? And no, I'm not talking about Bill Gates. I'm talking about your average person, right? Your average rich, maybe a few million bucks, five million bucks, whatever. Be smarter. This will happen again. To this extent, I don't know, but it will happen again. What position will you be in the next time it happens, which is right now? That's the only thing I'm getting to you guys. What position will you be in the next time it happens? Because it's a foregone conclusion that it will happen. And it's happening right now. 
Okay, so I'll go back to it. Double bottom retest, breaks the trend line, breaks the moving average up here. Maybe you start nibbling some at 35. Okay, then right here is where you'd expect what? 41 area sellers to creep in. Now, if this chart was longer, you'd note that this, <laughs> the market just went higher, right? Just kept on going higher. All right, so the point is, is this looks very much like a technical chart. And some people will throw it out and go, well, I'm, I'm a, I'm a long-term investor. The heck with those technicals. You can learn a lot from them. And I'll tell you flat, hedge funds use both. They use fundamentals and technicals. Some of them are heck, they're, they're just algo funds these days. But the point though is you can learn a lot from this. Breaking a trend line, breaking above a moving average, putting in a higher low or a higher high, pulling back to a previous area of support. And once again, I'm not expecting you necessarily to hit the bottom and get the perfect entry. That's aggressive at the time in which it happens. But you should be smart enough. You should have learned enough to take advantage of these nasty 20, 30, 40% pullbacks when they give you this pattern. Okay. Now, to be fair, and I should have put it in here, and I apologize for not, the COVID bounce was different. It was a V-shaped bottom recovery. And that was a tough one to take advantage of because it didn't really give you a great indication that the markets were just gonna rip higher, right? It, it, it didn't. So that would have been a more challenging one to take advantage of. I'm not saying you couldn't have, and I should have put the chart in, I apologize. But there's always opportunity, especially when you have a plan, right? When you know what you're looking for, the opportunity will present itself. When you don't know what you're looking for, opportunity will elude you because you just have no idea you're shooting in the dark and you're listening to your cab driver your uber driver your parents your friends and they don't really know what they're doing right it's just a friend of a friend of a friend of a friend told them they ever you know again i don't want to get off on a tangent topic here but it relates to stocks you ever just listen sometimes just sit back and a bunch of your friends are talking five friends ten friends listen to news listen to whatever i don't care what it is listen to I don't know, over, over listen to somebody's dinner conversation. And then as you're listening, write down things you're curious about. Somebody said X, Y, Z. Uber is a $10 billion company. Write it down. Then go back to your computer when you have time and double check if Uber is a $10 billion company. Where am I going with this? Misinformation is rampant in the world. No, not just in the last two years, four years. No, 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 no. Misinformation has been around since the beginning of time. It just travels faster nowadays, okay? The point I'm getting at is most of the information you're hearing out there has elements of misinformation in it. So you shouldn't be taking stock advice from your Uber driver or your parents or your friends unless there's a reason that you should be taking that advice. Maybe they're great investors and they have a great track record, right? Meaning it's okay to question things and then go back and do your homework on it instead of, wait for it, full circle, taking your very hard earned money, very hard earned money, and just dumping it into something you know little about. And this is what people do. Oh yeah, Bitcoin's the greatest thing. It's don't miss out on this trend. Look what it's already done. And it's not just Bitcoin, it could be anything. It could be Netflix, it could be Amazon, it could be a good company, it could be a bad company. And maybe they're right sometimes, maybe they're not. But the idea of blindly putting money into something you don't understand is called foolishness or stupidity, depends. You might get away with it once in a while, but it's just not a good approach for earning money or being wealthy in this world. You should be betting on things that you're confident in because you have a reason to be so, right? You've done some homework, you've done some research, fundamentals, chart analysis, whatever it is when it comes to trading. But don't just be like, yeah, you know, Johnny Z over there said I should do it, so I'm going to do it. Okay, so I hope that you guys learned a little bit about transitions, how they relate to good trades versus bad trades, as well as how they relate to the current market environment and where and when you should be taking advantage of this pullback. I am a believer that we have not hit the bottom yet, and I think we go lower, okay? But after we go lower, there will be a bounce because, well, there's always a bounce. We just don't know when and to what extent. Okay. So with that, I hope you guys learned a bit. I'm Jared Wesley of Live Traders. We'll get back at it again next week.